Come on, let's get going. As told by Vignard de Bourgmont, a French explorer in the year 1710, these are the most beautiful countries and the most handsome lands in the world. The prairies are like seas and they're full of wild animals, especially bison and deer, in numbers that stagger the imagination. anxious to start exploring the prairie. But first, can anybody tell me what the word prairie means? I got it. It says here that prairie is a French word that means meadow or grassy area. Prairie has rich, fertile soils, grasses, wildflowers, and very few trees. Very good, Kayla. The top layer of the prairie soil is very fertile because decaying plants and animal material act as a fertilizer. This top layer is called humus. Below that is a second layer called sod. Millions of plant roots make up this thick mass. So does that mean that all prairie is the same? Well, it may seem that way, but just like there are different types of wetlands, there are different types of prairies too. North Dakota has two types of prairies, the tall grass prairie in the eastern side of the state and the mixed grass prairie that dominates the other two thirds of the state. At the far west end of the mixed grass prairie in North Dakota are the badlands. This area is very dry and has shorter grasses, cactus, and yucca. What kind of prairie do you think we're visiting today? The mixed grass prairie. Right, but before we begin our assignment on this mixed grass prairie, let's take just a moment to talk about the tall grass prairie too. What's the difference? Why is the tall grass prairie tall? It says in this book that the tall grass prairie receives more rainfall and snowfall than the mixed grass prairie. And as a result, the grasses can grow up to six feet in height, as tall as a man on horseback. Wow, that's tall. It looks like big blue stem and Indian grass are two of the common grasses found in the tall grass prairie. It also looks like there are lots of colorful wild flowers like the prairie lily, bottle or clothes gentian, and even the western prairie fringed orchid. This plant is an endangered species and lives in Ransom and Richland counties in southeastern part of North Dakota. North Dakota has more prairie fringed orchids than anywhere else in the world. Wow, that sounds beautiful. Maybe next field trip we can visit the tall grass prairie. I would love to see a western prairie fringed orchid. Yeah, maybe. But for now, let's get started on our assignment of the mixed grass prairie. Does everybody have their clipboard and scavenger hunt sheet? Yep, got it right here. Check. Okay. Why don't you go see what you can discover, and then we'll meet over there on that hillside in just a little bit. Hey, how's it going? One of the first things on our list is to find two types of grasses. Look at this grass growing in clumps. According to our book, I think it's little blue stem. It says it's a common grass found on the mixed grass prairie. Hey look, I found another type of grass. This one looks like it's got little tiny combs on it. That's blue grandma grass, another common grass of the mixed grass prairie. Hey everyone, come over here, I found some flowers. Hey, I know what this flower is. It's our state flower, the prairie rose. Oh, we have that one on our list, so we can check that one off. Hey, here's another flower. Hey, I think that's the purple cone flower. I remember reading that the Native Americans and early settlers use the roots for medicine for things like the common cold. Right, they even sell it today in pill form to help stimulate the immune system. Well, we've been searching for a while. Should we take a little break for our scavenger hunt? Good idea, I'm thirsty. While we're sitting here, let's talk a little bit about the animals that live on the prairie. 
When Lewis and Clark traveled through North Dakota, they remarked that the prairie was full of wildlife, from the large bison to the fragile butterfly. Has anybody checked off any wildlife yet? No. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's get going. You hear that? Sounds like a little bunch of barks. There's the little noisemakers. It's a bunch of prairie dogs. Great eyes, kids. The prairie dog town is one of the busiest wildlife places on the prairie. Even though they're called prairie dogs, they're not in the dog family. They're really in the ground squirrel family. Lewis and Clark wanted to name it Barking Squirrel or Burrowing Squirrel, but Sergeant Ordway insisted that it be called the prairie dog, and that name just stuck. Prairie dogs have extensive burrows underground that provide shelter from the hot sun or cold in the winter winds, and they provide nurseries for their pups. These burrows are also home to many other animals. Let's sit and watch the prairie dog town for a few minutes and see if you can find any other species on your list to check off. Quick, look to the left. There's a little owl sitting on top of a burrow. Burrowing owls are one of the few owls in the world that nest underground. What other animals do you think would live in a prairie dog town? How about snakes? Snakes live in cool, dark places. You're exactly right. The prairie dog burrows are the perfect place for the prairie rattlesnake. The prairie rattlesnake lives in prairie dog burrows and feeds on mice, ground squirrels, and young prairie dogs. There's another animal that's extremely fond of the prairie dog town. Can anybody guess what it might be? No. OK, I'll give you a clue. One, it's nocturnal and two, it's on the endangered species list. Nocturnal? I remember, that means that it's most active at night, like bats and owls. Oh, I know. It's a ferret, the black-footed ferret. I remember seeing it on our poster. They're very cute. Way to go, Jess. The endangered black-footed ferret relies on prairie dog towns for food and their tunnels for shelter. OK, let's take some more time to observe the prairie dog town. See what other animals you can find that use the above ground portion of the town. Don't forget to take a close look at your scavenger hunt sheets before we go so you don't miss anything or forget to fill in any blanks. Okay, let's go. I think there's a question on your scavenger hunt sheet that asks, in the time of Lewis and Clark, what large herd animal could often be seen grazing on the prairie? The bison like to graze on the short grass of the towns because the grass has more nutrients here. Killdeer lay their eggs on the exposed ground in the towns. And hawks feed on slow-moving prairie dogs and other animals on the towns. The prairie is an ever-changing environment. Years of drought, floods, periodic fires, bitterly cold winters and hot summers can make the prairies a difficult place to live. Prairie plants have very long roots, often reaching nearly nine feet deep. These roots can reach deep into the earth to absorb moisture and nutrients. This helps them survive fire, grazing, and droughts. Wildlife must also have special tools or adaptations to help them survive the harsh weather and prairie environment. Some animals live underground, like the prairie dog, several kinds of ground squirrels, prairie rattlesnakes, and badgers. This allows them to stay cool in the summer, warm in the winter, and avoid fires and predators. Badgers have huge claws and shovel-like feet that allow them to dig big holes. Animals that live above ground, like pronghorn and bison, need hair that keeps them warm in the winter. Bison's thick hair helped insulate its body as it travels through deep snowdrifts and endured the prairie winds. With large open areas, animals must be able to scan the area and use lightning speed to avoid predators. Jackrabbits are built for speed. Their large hind legs can propel them quickly across the grass. Pronghorns can reach speeds of more than 50 miles an hour, faster than any coyote can run. Some animals rely on their colors to hide them. This is called camouflage. Many female birds nest on the ground in the prairie. They need to blend in with the color of the grass. The male birds are often more brightly colored, which helps them attract a mate in the spring. Sharp-tailed grouse females are dressed in plain brown, black, and cream-colored feathers to help her hide as she sits on her nest. 
Some animals were given very sharp eyesight, like the golden eagle. The golden eagle is a predator that soars high in the air and can spot its prey below in the grass. Golden eagles have sharp talons for hanging on to prey, such as jackrabbits and squirrels, and a curved beak for tearing and cutting up meat. Hey, I just thought of an example of a prairie food chain. I think I remember learning that the jackrabbit is a primary consumer because it eats the grass, which is the producer. And an eagle is a secondary consumer because it eats a jackrabbit. Wow, that's nice to know you guys actually were paying attention in class. Boy, we sure saw a lot of animals today. I almost have everything checked off my list. I never knew that there were so many animals on the prairie. My grandparents have a cattle ranch in western North Dakota, and they need the prairie for food for their cows. Wildlife need prairie for cover to nest in. Prairie plants help hold the soil from blowing and control erosion. The prairie is part of our rich North Dakota heritage and history. I like to go grouse hunting in the fall with my mom and dad. My mom bought me a new pair of binoculars and I love to go bird watching on the prairie. Prairies are sure important places for wildlife and people. I would sure hate to lose our prairies. In our book it says that approximately 25% of our North Dakota's mixed grass prairie remains and only 2% of the tall grass prairie. Some of the prairie has been replaced by cropland and grasses from other countries and developments like homes, shopping centers, and power plants. Trees have been planted and domestic livestock like cattle, sheep, and horses have replaced the bison. Prairie wolves and grizzly bears could not adapt to the changes and were forced out of North Dakota. Black-footed ferrets that depend on prairie dogs died out in North Dakota. As the prairie environment vanishes, short-eared owls, bobolinks, western meadowlarks, and other animals that need prairie are in trouble. As the prairie is converted to cropland and trees, white-tailed deer, red-tailed hawks, red fox, and great horned owls become more plentiful. What can we do to help save the prairies? We can study it and learn what makes it special. I could take my friends and family out and show them all the wonderful things that live here. We could tell others in our schools and towns about it. We could write letters to our legislators and governor asking them to protect the prairies. Very good ideas, you guys. But you know what? It's about time to go, so I think we better pack up our stuff and head back to the van. We'll go over our scavenger hunt sheets tomorrow in class and start planning our next field trip.